Just a reminder, everyone on the uh, order of operations while we're waiting for uh, USC to head over here, it'll be the uh, winning team first, followed by the uh, non-advancing team. Uh, we'll have two minutes for uh, head coach opening statement. The next eight minutes will be open to questions for the student athletes, followed by up to another 10 minutes with the head coach. Right now for, U, uh, for USC, we'll have head coach Lindsey Gottlieb along with Rhea Marshall, Juju Watkins, and Mackenzie Forbes. For Baylor, head coach Nikki Collin, and uh, it's looking like we're going with uh, Jada Walker and Sarah Andrews.
USC is making its way over to the press conference area, so we'll just go through our reminders. Please silence all cell phones. No flash photography and no video allowed during the press conference. Uh, press conference video can be downloaded afterwards from the NCAA Media Hub. We'll take questions from the media room first, followed by questions from everybody on Zoom. We ask that you please state your name and affiliation and name and affiliation and who you're directing your question towards uh, before you ask your question. And again, it's a two minutes uh, head coach opening statement, eight minutes to the student athletes, uh, 10 minutes uh, after that to the head coach, and uh, various amounts of time for whatever is going through the air ducts. All right, USC with the 74-70 win over Baylor. Joining us in the postgame press conference, head coach Lindsey Gottlieb, along with student athletes Rhea Marshall, Juju Watkins, and Mackenzie Forbes. Coach, congratulations on the win. Uh, we'll begin with your opening statement, and then we'll open it up with the questions for student athletes. Um, thank you all for being here and your continued coverage. I think that was a heck of a basketball game. First, I want to credit Baylor, who, who I think came out and were a terrific version of what they're really good at and I think that speaks a lot to their players and their coaching staff um, getting here and then on this stage being a really good version of of themselves um, I'm so proud of our team uh, we're in the elite eight we have an incredible group of young people who just care about winning more than anything else uh, we had to gut check them a little bit in that you know after the third quarter and to me when you can come out with the win that's the greatest thing of all that we, we took you know, we took a little hit there. Um, we got popped in that third quarter, and we came back and regrouped and decided we have to be a really good version of us because Baylor's coming with everything they have. And I thought that was the difference, our response in the fourth quarter. So super proud and excited. And the main thing is we want to keep going with this team. I, I, I want to stay with them as long as we possibly can. So we're excited to be practicing tomorrow and, and playing on Monday. Can everyone hear all right? No. Okay. Can we get the, mo can we get the uh, speakers up? We'll do the best we can, obviously, the uh, HVAC's out of our control. Uh, we'll go ahead and open up some questions to student athletes. Okay, can you hear me okay? Okay. Um, Bella Munson with the next. Um, Juju, with four minutes left in the game, your head coach called you over and said something to you for a minute there. Um, and then after that, it seemed like it was clutch play after clutch play, whether it was assisting, rebounding, free throw line. What did she say to you, and what, if anything, did it change in that moment for you? I'm not gonna lie, I don't really remember, but I think it was just a collective like sense of urgency. I mean, just just knowing what was on the line and our position, us being down um, during that stretch. So it was just a matter of turning the game around, and I know um, I had to do something, or, or you know. Um, so I just I was glad that I got the opportunity to to help my team with with some free throws and stuff like that. Over here next, and then Lindsay. Hi, Michelle Smith, the next. Congratulations. Um, Ferreira, you guys have not been in this spot before. 
did you learn something about yourselves today or was it did you already know going in that you guys would be able to handle a situation in a game like this in a close game down the stretch humbly i i have faith in my team because we we've um, been we've faced adversity a ton of times and when when we are against adversity our backs up against the wall we actually rise to the occasion i mean these two are like extreme competitors so they're coming into huddles before coach g can even tell us our next direction direction saying what we need to do and if if I'm in a dogfight, I would rather be in a dogfight with this team. Lindsay? Uh, Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Ju, I know you were um, giving Kenzie a hard time yesterday about being old and not being able to get in the back of the van and whatnot. Yeah. But she's a pretty important player. And I wondered, what have you learned from her and all her wisdom? Man, she's like Yoda. Um, she's. <laughs> Nah, she's just super smart. Um, all the Ivies, but but Kenzie especially. I think we have a special relationship, just like bet and rookie type vibe. But she's always just um, encouraging me and, and really um, speaking to me in times when I need it during the game. So she's just a great leader, and I'm just glad to to have that type of leadership my first year. Sabrina. Sabrina Merchant, The Athletic. Uh, for any of the players, it seemed like any time you guys needed a big play, especially defensively in the fourth quarter, Caitlin Davis was there. Uh, what can you say about just her effort throughout the comeback? Yeah, I, can y'all hear me? Oh. Uh, yeah, I just think that's like who Katie is as a player. Um, you know, she's always going to make the gritty, the tough play. Um, and I think wherever, you know, wherever, whatever team she's on, obviously I battled her last year, like whatever, wherever she goes, she brings that with her. So that doesn't surprise me at all. Um, and her, those plays are huge for us down the stretch. We depend on her, um, and it definitely, you know, I, I definitely don't take it for granted. I don't think any of us do. She was huge. Go ahead. David Yapko, it's from the next. Uh, for Juju, I mean, you know, obviously we see uh, 30 points, you know, the defensive matchups that you took in, in the fourth quarter there, but I still think, you know, one of the, the more underrated aspects of your game is your playmaking, you know, and, and not just necessarily getting assists, but, you know, knowing when to make the right reads out there, you know, and just kind of, how, how's that part of your game just developed a little bit, you know, throughout this season and, and here into the tournament? Yeah, I mean, I would say it's still developing. I think that, um, even though I had 30, it wasn't my best night. Um, but honestly, just doing whatever it is um, to win, I think that's priority always. So whether it's defensively making the right play, um, getting off of it, like stuff like that, um, just whatever I need to do. Uh, Casey Kaslinger with the Daily Trojan. Rhea, you made that free throw at the end to effectively put the game out of reach. Can you take us through that moment, especially playing in a pro-level arena at, in the Sweet 16? So the, believe it or not, I didn't purposely try to do that. When I got the rebound, I always look for Juju and Kenzie, and I seen like I, I seen a ton of green jerseys around Juju. So I was like, okay, let me think quick. And before I could get off of it, I see it was like Baylor jerseys swarming me. So I go to the line. Um, I remember just watching Juju at the line all game. I was like praying, God, God, please let her make this. Please let her make this. So I said, you know what? Now it's my turn. Let me let me like. Call in my inner juju, just knock down this first free throw, and after that, I just kind of rejoiced. Over there, and then Alexa. <laughs> juju, uh, Luke Evans. Name and affiliation, County. please. Yeah, uh, Luke Evans, Orange County Register. Uh, juju, that, that fourth quarter, I think about four minutes left, tie game, you go down in transition, and there's two defenders in front of you, and you know, you don't. You don't look anywhere else. You just go right at them and attack. And obviously, at that point, you're not shooting well from the floor. I mean, what what in your mentality in that moment and just in that fourth quarter in general just allows you to kind of keep pushing in those moments and be confident in yourself? Yeah, I mean, it really all uh, boils down to the trust that that everybody has in me. Um, despite me not shooting well tonight, I think that um, when the game's on the line. Um, I think my teammates trusted me to to attempt a bucket, and luckily we uh, came out on top with that one. But man, we just we just want to win, and, and whatever it is, I can contribute or, or try to do for the team. That I'm going to do it. Are you recording video? Okay. Uh, Alexa Philbu, ESPN for Mackenzie and Raya. Kind of the similar question there when even if Juju's not having her best night and knowing that she has before made those game winning plays or really clutch plays in the right moments where have you seen that really develop the most and how much trust do you have in her that even if she's not shooting well that 
she'll be able to do what it takes to help you guys win. She's a competitor. I, I could trust her all my life. Like, when it comes down to winning, she's going to do what she has to do. Like, she's coming into the huddle after the third quarter fired up. Like, let's get our shit together. Sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> well, that's what she said, but let's get ourselves together. <laughs> and um, so, like, with that, of course we're going to trust, trust what she had to say. Yeah, I'll just to add on to that, like, Ju is a winner, and, and we see the work that she puts in, so I never – lack confidence in her we have all the all the trust in the world um and like was mentioned before she's not just a scorer she's a playmaker you know she gets off the ball when they come to her um getting our bigs a lot of easy dump downs um so you know we've seen that time and time again throughout the season all the way back to when we played Penn State in the Bahamas you know so we've just seen that growth and we trust in her got a question up front Uh, Thomas Johnson, Daily Trojan. Juju, you went to the free throw line seven times in the fourth quarter, and you already talked about how your confidence stayed there, but how do you stay calm in those type of moments? Um, uh, Sorry. I think just knowing what's on the line. I mean, um, I wasn't really able, like I said, not the best shooting night for me, so I had to make sure that I capitalized off of easy and, and free buckets, honestly, so... Um, I always practice free throws. We practice in practice, so it's really nothing new. So, um, yeah. Lindsay? Uh, Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Kenzie, I know you've had quite a circuitous route throughout um, college basketball, but I just wondered, you seem to play with a lot of joy. How much fun are you having this year? And I wondered, who was the, when you kissed, uh, waved a kiss to the crowd, blew a kiss to the crowd after you hit that three. Who was that for? Uh, that was for all the Trojan fans. I feel like we had a great showing of Trojan fans, by the way. Um, and my, my whole family is out there. So, But yeah, I, I, this, I'm having the best time of my life. Uh, this is by far like the most fun season of basketball I've ever had. Um, and I think it has everything to do like with my teammates um, and this staff. Um, and obviously winning, winning is really fun, too. <laughs> OK, Kerry, we'll have our last question for the student athletes. Uh, Kerry Eggers, KerryEggers.com. Juju, uh, your struggle at the shooting today, how much of that was just an off day and how much of it was their defensive effort? Uh, I'm just, I mean, the defense was great, like very um, competitive always. I mean, we knew Baylor was going to bring the heat. They're known for their defense. Um, but, I, you know, me just having confidence in what I'm able to do, I would say it's, it was an off night for me personally. Congratulations on the win. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, soon athletes are dismissed. Thank you. Love Jeezy. <laughs> All right, we'll open up the questions now for uh, Coach Gottlieb. We've got 10 minutes. Uh, let's go ahead. Uh, if you haven't had a question yet, we'll start over here. Uh, Luke Evans, Orange County Register. Lindsay, how, how impactful was, was Rhea tonight, you know, just to, as far as kind of imposing her will early, seven first quarter rebounds, uh, and, and how key has she been down the stretch for, for this team? Uh, well, you can see that she's a joy to be around, uh, uh, and that's pretty much Rhea all the time, but we knew that her imposing her will in the paint was going to be important. I mean, I looked at the stat sheet and I was like, wow, Rhea, you had 16 rebounds, but I'm not surprised because she was out there swooping everything up. Um, I, you know, I thought she was terrific in practice getting ready for this, understanding her assignment. She finished. Uh, I thought she was really, really good. And, I, again, I, I've said this before, she and Clarice play off each other really well. I thought Clarice came in and gave us really excellent minutes as well. So I thought that was one of the differences in the game that we, we felt like our size could help us. Right here. Uh, Terrence Holton, Annenberg Media. Coach, the entire last minute, Baylor was just staying in reach. What were you telling your team to stay, like, to how to stay calm during those timeouts? Um, I mean, as the players said, we've been in a lot of close games and a lot of situations, so I don't think I'm coaching poise. I I, I don't. I feel like Kenzie's just next level. Yoda's a good word. Um, But Juju, I mean, I think that's what a lot of you guys are alluding to at the free throw. She just has a poise about her, and I think we've been in a lot of situations. So it was less coaching their mentality and more trying to coach what was going on. We obviously gave up that three, but it was more tactical. Like, are we switching? Are we staying? Are we, what do they need to do, and how do we get a stop? Um, because I, I do think they understand what, it, what it's like to be in close games and how to finish a game, how to close it out. Sabrina? 
Sabrina Merchant, The Athletic, uh, you kind of alluded to this earlier. Baylor does such a good job of creating space on offense. Uh, what did you guys have to shift as the game went on to just take away that space? I mean, quite on, there were a couple different things. Quite honestly, I thought their monstrous third quarter had a lot to do with our shot selection and our kind of impatience on offense. Um, they're really good defensively. They're very athletic and they brought a lot of bodies. And I have, like, they know I have so much trust, obviously, Kenzie and Juju in transition and all of our playmakers, but we took a couple tough ones and then, and then it was harder. The floor was unbalanced and they were good. So I really got on them about just making the right play. When you're loose in transition, go. But when we're not, let's run the set, because actually some of our sets were getting us some backdoor looks and freeing us up a little bit better. So a lot of it was on our shot selection. But then um, we knew, I mean, it's a winner go home. Like, do we want to get stops or not? Um, you know, we really locked in. Kay Will coming in uh, helped us a lot uh, because, I mean, Kay, Kayla Padilla just plays her tail off and she was exhausted and so k will coming in when walker got hot was huge i thought our bigs locking in on their screen coverages um we just made it a little bit tougher on them in the fourth than we did on the third and it was a balance between our offense getting better and our defense locking in Over here. david yapko it's from the next coach um i wanted to ask you you know the same question about juju you know and her playmaking you know not necessarily assist but you know the hockey assist or, yeah. you know she draws two on the ball and she knows where to pass it to you know, she's got someone shading her and, and she makes the, the right read. Just, you know, what can you say about, you know, how, how important that is, you know, when, when she's, she gets into that mode, when she's able to make those reads like that? I mean, it's unbelievable what she handles, right? Like, you cannot put one person on her, she will score. You can't really put two. You have to show a lot of bodies. And then, again, for her to end up with 30 and four assists on, on not her best shooting night, I do think she's feeling the floor incredibly well. I don't know if she would describe it that way because that's not, you know, but we, we talk about reads and next level reads and trusting your teammates and just making the right play. And I think she's always been really capable of that. I mean, I don't, I don't think she, she came in only as a scorer, only as a passer or a rebounder, but I think what's evolved is just seeing the, the court and understanding, you know, where she needs to get the ball and what reads she can make out of that. That timeout, the, or the, the conversation at four minutes, it was me asking her, like, I'm trying to empower her more, you know, where can I get it to you? Like, I didn't love her up with it at the top, and they could just throw bodies. So that's when I started trying to get it to her at the elbow um, and let her make plays from there. And, and I think that's when she dimed one to somebody off of that drive, and she just gets in her space. So for me, there's so much. How can I get it to make it difficult on defense and easy for her to see her reads? And other people do a really good job of playing off of her as well. Lindsay? Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Lindsay, I don't know how much there is left to say about Ken Kenzie at this point, but I'm just wondering about the joy she plays with and, like you said, her, her poise. She's played basketball for a long time, but she hasn't been in these type of situations. So yeah. where does it come from? Uh, I think some of it is innate. Um, she's... She's confident because she also puts the work in. Like you, your confidence is earned with how much work you do. Uh, some of it, um, I just think, is personality. Um, she loves to hoop. She loves talking basketball. I've said it before. She's going to be an NBA or WNBA GM sooner than later if that's what she wants to do. We talk about that stuff all the time. She really understands it. But I love seeing the joy. Like she loves to hoop. She'd rather be you know, doing this, even with the Harvard degree, probably than schoolwork, right? And so she feeds off the positive energy from everybody else. She leads us. It's really fun. I mean, it's what college basketball is supposed to be. Um, so I think it's a mix of confidence and high IQ and just joy for her teammates and, and playing basketball. Right there. Tiffany win with the LA Times. You, you mentioned Kayla Williams coming off the bench. How much of a lift has she been, especially late in the season, coming back from that offseason surgery? Uh, for you guys in a, in a time you really need some of that defensive spark? It's been tremendous. I mean, you know, it's she played 32 minutes a game or something last year, right? And then she had four months where she didn't, you know, couldn't do much because of her injury and then come back and we had sort of were formulated at that point, right? Like, and so to her credit, she's been incredibly selfless, team first kid, find, trying to find her rhythm and her role and you know, we've talked about, we know it in, our, in that locker room, she is incredibly valued because even in kind of shorter stints, she's come in and won us games. I mean, I can go back to, you know, at Cal, change the tempo of a game. Uh, Arizona, like she just can do different things on the ball defensively. She can do different things breaking down a defense. And I mean, those eight, 10, 12 minutes, whatever it is, are valuable. And we wouldn't be where we are without any of those wins that has led us to, to here. And so it's, it's really, I think, a cool story and I keep telling the players like you know when when you win 
no one remembers how many minutes you played or points you scored, really. They remembered, like, who's a winner? Everyone gets a ring if you get a ring, you know? And, and so I think uh, her contributions have been unbelievable for us. Up front and then over there. Uh, Casey Kasliner with the Daily Trojan. Coach, you got Clarice involved early in the game. She had some quality minutes there at the beginning of the second quarter. Considering Baylor is not the tallest team and Clarice obviously had a great game against Kansas, was getting her involved early part of your game plan? For sure. I mean, that, just to speak again about our depth, like, you know, we, we obviously play the starters pretty heavy minutes, but we have quality, you know, depth, um, and, we, and we're, really, we're really confident in who we're bringing in. I think they're confident now in their roles. And again, credit to Clarice. It's a different thing to be kind of banging a 6'6 six, six player and then sort of chasing a smaller player in space. And I think she did a really good job of c coming in and giving, giving good minutes. When Katie had some fouls, I played Rhea and Clarice together some. Um, yeah, we have a lot of belief in what she brings to us, and I thought she, she gave really, really good minutes. Jesse Doherty with the Washington Post. I know this isn't anything new, but just the amount of attention Juju gets, not just on the court, but like a camera following her pregame and all of us talking to her all the time. How impressed are you with the way just she handles that and then still performs on top of it? It's hard to put into words. And again, as a, as a freshman, you know, you see it, like the poise is innate for her. Like that's just who she is. She doesn't, like I'd like, you know, we track obviously their, um, their catapults, tra tracks their load and all that. S sometimes she plays so hard, she's always, you know, exerting the most energy. But in terms of you could just like measure someone's kind of pulse, she just is even keeled. And it's really cool. Like the way that she plays, like she cares, she's a winner, but nobody's going to rattle her. Not, you know, officials, not another team. It's, it's a, not teammates. Like it's, it's something to see. And I think it's what makes her a great one and is going to make her one of the greatest ones. The off the court stuff is also unbelievable. I've said this before. Juju is not a reality star who also plays basketball. She is a hooper, a savant, like an artist on the court who is gaining a lot of attention, as she should, but she keeps the main thing the main thing. Um, she's unbelievable with fans. We saw, like, this one girl was crying as she was signing. It was really cool. Like, um, our AD said, wow, it's like a Taylor Swift moment. And she said, no, it's like a Juju moment, right? We see people in her jerseys. The flocks are coming to see her in Galen Center, and she just handles that beautifully because I think she understands her importance on a larger picture to the community and yet she does that while keeping the main thing the main thing. I credit Juju and I credit her circle around her. I think they really they really have done an unbelievable job. Unfortunately we are out of time coach. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Congratulations. Thank and, you guys. Uh, we will talk to you tomorrow. Appreciate it. Well Baylor on the day is momentarily. All right, joining us now from Baylor, 
head coach Nikki Collin, along with student athletes Jada Walker and Sarah Andrews. Uh, coach, an incredibly hard fought game tonight. Uh, we'll begin with the opening statement and then we'll open it up to questions for the student athletes. Um, thought it was a really great game. Um, the lead changes, uh, the runs. I thought, um, you know, when you look at the box score, I thought we, we did a lot of things really well. We won almost every statistical category except free throws, both taken and made. So clearly the difference in the game was the foul line. Um, but I thought uh, these guys battled like crazy against Juju, made, made her inefficient, um, you know, made her make tough shots, take tough shots, make tough shots. I thought at the beginning of the game, um, you know, our transition D, our squeezing wasn't great. And I thought it got better as the game went along. Um, I thought we made a few mistakes, but I think there's always going to be game slippage in a, in a moment this big. And, and I thought um, they got a heavy dose of Baylor basketball in the second half. I thought we looked a little, the moment was a little big for us in the first half. And then I thought we really settled down and played really good basketball in the second half. Thought the ball was moving, the ball had energy. I thought we were battling at the defensive end. Um, you know, to out rebound a team that, that has more size than us at absolutely every position. Um, you know, I just I thought we were relentless on the boards. I thought, you know, one rebound there with five seconds to go on the shot clock and 29 seconds in the game. Um, I think if that's a two, two point game and we run the same play to get Sarah three that we saved in our back pocket all season, um, you know, we, we may be on the winning side of this, but super proud of our these guys and, and their effort. I thought they both had big stretches. I thought Jada got going there and was heating it up off the bounce and, and Sarah from three in the second half to really create separation. We'll open up the questions for the student athletes. Uh, please say your name and affiliation and who your questions directed towards. Start down here in front. Uh, Zach Smith, Waco Trib. Sarah, uh, how have you seen this team grow from you know game one to where you're at now? Because you're a very different team than the start of the season. Um, you know, honestly, I think we shocked a lot of people. Um, nobody thought that we would be here. Um, we started out 13-0. and We hit adversity once we got into the conference and then um, hit adversity at the Big 12 tournament. But I think overall, um, we grew in a way that nobody would ever believe. Um, we became tighter, became sisters. Um, I think you saw in the last game, um, like in moments where we would have turned the ball over late in the game, we stuck, thugged it out against Virginia Tech. Um, Jada came down the stretch and made big plays. Yaya, Bugs. I mean, I could just go on and on about this team. And I think, you know, that's the main reason why I'm coming back next year is because because like, to play with a group like this, uh, it was a great year. And, and then, Jada, what, what will you remember most about this team, and specifically for you, uh, the way you finished the season? Uh, how much momentum does that give you? Um, definitely our fight. Um, I really enjoy how much this team fights uh, on and off the court, but um, especially in big moments. Um, we really fought in this game. Um, I know calls weren't going our way, but we continued to fight. Uh, we got down one, uh, took the lead, lost the lead, took the lead. Um, it's a game of runs, so um, we went on one. Uh, we tried to the end, um, but for me personally, I feel like I had a great turnaround from the beginning of the season to now, um, just hitting shots, being more confident in myself, not turning the ball over as much, and really um, just watching Sarah, how she leads, and trying to take on that role more and more um, as we go on in the season. So, proud. Kevin, Kevin Pelton, ESPN.com. Sarah, I'm, I'm curious now about that, that play that, you know, is it presumably the three to get it within one? Is that something that you'd been running in practice all year based on what Coach said? And then what did you think of the look that was after that that would have potentially tied the game? Uh, yeah, that was something we've been practicing uh, the past uh, week, a uh, few weeks. Um, it was a great call by Coach. Uh, when I shot the ball, I thought I was off balance, thought I airballed, and, you know, it went in. Um, and the shot I took, the last shot, um, I had confidence when I took it. I had just hit one, um, and I had hit, like, two earlier in the game back-to-back. -back. So I took that shot with confidence, and I knew the team was behind me when I took that shot. So it was never no doubt in my mind when I shot it. Like, um, you know, basketball, you, you win some, you lose some. So I shot a confident shot, and I'm okay with that. Nicole Sharon, 6 News, Waco. For both of you, you know, yesterday we talked about it. Y'all went into this matchup with that underdog mentality, fully embracing it. What kind of message do you guys think you sent today? Obviously, it came up just short, but what kind of message overall do you think you guys sent? Um, really that we can compete with anybody. Um, 
I know we're the underdog. I know people don't pick us to win necessarily, but we're going to come out and fight, and we're going to keep continuing to try to upset um, whoever's put in front of us. So I'm really proud of our team and the way we played. Uh, yeah, to piggyback off of that, I think, you know, um, people are going to be scared for next season. I think, you know, everybody's going to be looking to see how Baylor grows. Um, we put everybody on alert. Um, that was a great moment for us. I think, you know, a lot of people grew in this game. We grew, but I think most of all, we put a lot of people on alert for next year. Come up front. Foster Nicholas, Baylor Lariat. Sarah, you and Bugs kind of just going back and forth in that third quarter to get it back. What was your mentality there, and how did you guys claw your way back there? Uh, we weren't going to go down without a fight. Um, we were right there. I think, you know, they don't want to give us five more minutes because uh, it might be a different outcome. So I think, you know, we were, we were going to give it all we got. Um, but I think, you know, Bugs stepped up, and she had some big-time shots that uh, built confidence in me to take the next shot. So I think, you know, we were just playing in the moment of we're not going down without a fight. Kevin Pelton, ESPN.com. For either player, does anything kind of stand out from USC at an 8 nothing run to kind of take control late in the game? Uh, any moment or any play that stands out that you wonder what might have been there? Uh, I think, you know, they went on that run. I think that was coming out of the third quarter. They just uh, they hit some big shots. Uh, they got some really talented players. I think, you know, they just hit some big shots. Any other questions for our student athletes? All right, thank you very much for your time and congratulations on a great season. Thank you. Good job, you guys. All right, we'll open it up to questions now for Coach Cullen. Start up front. Uh, Zach Smith, Waco Trip Coach. That the end of end of the game is that kind of how you drew it up? That last look that Sarah got. You know, um, I don't know which one you're talking to. When we were when we were down four, um, you know, we we ran a play um, with the slip handoff that Sarah hit the three to cut it to one. Um, the next play, with they had been pulling um, downhill. When we got downhill, um, I thought they were going to leave Dre, and um, so we just set a flat screen. We had a, a triple screen along the baseline, really, that was dummy action, um, you know, to, to occupy the baseline people. And we were just trying to set a flat high ball screen, um, let Sarah play downhill, and hopefully throw it back um, to Dre. I just I don't think Sarah got clean off the screen. Like, we just we didn't clear space. Um, so did, we didn't drag them either in a switch. Um, because even when people switch, oftentimes they'll float a level of ball. So, you know, even if we, they would have switched, I thought Sarah could get downhill against their big and we might have been able to pitch back. I thought Dre, Dre makes threes um, in the middle of the floor. And, and oftentimes, late in games, it's easier to get your big shots than it is um, your littles, especially with the length that they have. Um, and, um, you know, there's a lot of different actions you can run in those situations, but um, I just thought that was the cleanest opportunity for us to potentially get a look. So, no, it wasn't designed to look like that. Um, but then I think we just we freelance from there and Sarah tried to make a play and um, super proud of her for for wanting to take it. You know, it's not easy to be the one um, to take those shots. Kevin? Kevin Pelton, ESPN.com, you highlighted the free throw disparity. Is there something you feel like you could have done differently to, to close that gap? Hmm. No. <laughs> I mean, it's not like we only took threes. Um, there were 43 shots inside the arc, so there were plenty of opportunities. When you look at the second half, the only time they called a foul, shooting foul, was on a pull-up jump shot. So all the times we drove the ball downhill, all the times it was either a block or the ball went out of bounds or it was nothing. So, um, you know, we took a lot of twos. We weren't unaggressive taking the ball to the basket. Um, so I just don't think we got the same whistle. Foster Nicholas, Baylor Lariat, can you talk a little bit about Jada just transferring over that momentum from Virginia Tech and coming through with some clutch mid-range shots? Yeah, I thought, um, you know, early she got downhill, and then I thought she looked really, really tired, and I took her out um, and kind of challenged her. She kind of has to get her second win sometimes. Um, but I thought um, she's just she's such a fearless competitor. She makes tough shots. 
I thought the shot she made, kind of circus shot going into the fourth quarter, um, she was hitting jump shots. You know, she kind of made them take Padilla out, which made them sometimes easier to guard. Because um, when they go to Kayla Williams, you have someone you can help off of a little bit more. Padilla is going to going to strike a three if you if you let her. We've just seen her in so many close games hit big threes. Um, but I think the nature of how Jada was playing forced them to go to a defensive lineup. So um, I think Jada started to get the sense. I mean, when Jada came to Baylor, um, she had played two years at Kentucky and had played no point guard. You know, um, Ryan Howard played there freshman year. Um, and, and Maddie Shear played there her sophomore year. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's not an easy – I'm not easy – I'm not easy to play for when it comes to point guards. Like, I don't think um, – and I don't say that because um, I'm mean or nasty or anything like that. But um, I want our point guards to think the game. I want them to flow into action. I want them we're, – we're not a come down the floor, pass it – to the wing and cut away in space. Like that's not who, that's not what I want to coach. That's not how we play. So you got to learn to play in drags. You got to learn to play in step ups. You got to learn to to have a big voice. And Jada has a really, really quiet voice. Um, so challenging her at all times to like really use her voice um, and understand, you know, why, why I would run what I run. You know, why are we staggering here? Who are we staggering for? Who do we loop to the top? Who do I want in a ball screen? You know, who, you know, we, we had talked all night long. We wanted, we wanted Padilla and ball screens. We wanted Padilla and Marshall and ball screens together in particular. So really, you know, gaining an understanding. And so I think for Jada, like she just came so far in terms of um, what the expectations are for point guards in our program. And, and you should love to be a point guard in our program, but it's not an easy, it's not an easy position. Um, but as, a, as the season wound down, it was, it was very much Jada get in the lane and create. Like, get in the lane and look for your jump shot. And I thought the more confidence she got taking her jump shot, I mean, when I looked down and saw she had seven assists, and I thought we blew some layups, even that she passed. Um, I mean, she played a really good floor game, and, and she also is just a menace on D. You know, if you, if you look at that game, they did not want to bring the ball down the floor with whoever she was defending. So that's why Forbes brought it down, or Juju brought it down, um, because they just they didn't want to face her pressure. Kevin Pelton, ESPN.com. How how'd you feel about your defensive effort on Juju in terms of making your work for her points holding down? Yeah, I thought we were great. I thought uh, I thought we started slow. Um, I thought we didn't really understand how 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 much we had to squeeze in transition, how much we had to bring congestion. Um, you know, I, th I thought she got early clean looks, had like three quick baskets, and then you look at the rest of the game. Um, you know, like. We've probably fouled her too much, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, ultimately, you know, she hit a couple couple shots in a row there to start the third when it was just kind of back and forth and no one could stop the, each other. But, um, you know, I thought Bella did an unbelievable job. I think Bella didn't score a lot of points tonight. Uh, but I thought Bella's length, her contest, um, she certainly hit a couple. But for the most part, you know, bugs switched off on her a little bit. But... It was she was Bella's um, probably 90% of the night, so I thought Bella did a great job um, guarding her. In the back, uh, Luke Evans, Orange County Register, Coach. Ha talking about Juju aside, how did you guys game plan, particularly for Mackenzie Forbes as well, and you know knowing that she can kind of come down, transition, and, and pull up at any given time. You know, how do, how do you feel you did on on her and the rest of USC's kind of perimeter threats? Yeah, I thought, um, you know, we made two huge mistakes on Forbes. Um, when she can walk into threes and transition, um, you know, they're not a um, – our mistakes were from our posts. You know, sometimes when a shot goes up, um, USC is not a team that consistently has a rim runner. Like, so they don't put pressure on the rim um, with a post sprinting down the middle of the floor very often. Um, and so a lot of times as our posts were running back, you know, it's, it's, they, they needed to take her both times that she got threes. She walked into threes. We had people back. We just didn't get matched up, um, you know. So I, I thought that was our biggest mistake on her. I thought we did a good job on her outside of that. Um, you know, Padilla, like we knew Juju was going to get shots. I mean, you can't take – we're not going to block all her shots. We're not going to keep her from taking shots. We wanted to make her inefficient, and we did that. Um, 
You know, we, we thought she'd take 30 shots, and so it was obviously right there. Um, but we thought we could do a good job on Padilla. We thought we could do a good job on Forbes. Um, Padilla's two shots in the first half came on offensive rebounds where we didn't secure rebounds. Like, we guarded her really, really well in the half court. Um, so it's those broken plays, um, ball, offensive rebound, kick out, one more type of plays. Um, so, you know, and then I thought she had a huge drive there at the end. I think she surprised Jada. Um, with kind of the rip drive three-point play. Um, she doesn't make a lot of twos, so and, and certainly doesn't make a lot of playmaking type twos. So um, that was a big shot by her, a big momentum swing, because it was a 6-0 run that included that and one um, that was maybe the difference if we don't foul or it's our ball with five, you know, with 28 seconds to go. This will be our last question. Nicole Sheeran, 6 News, Waco. Coach, Dre was talking about it, how thankful she is for you that you took a chance on her this season. For you specifically, just reflecting back, how special was this run with this team for you? <laughs> Dang it, Nicole. Special enough that I want to play on Monday. Yeah. I think, I think I've stayed really, really composed since the game ended because I just think we were in position to win the game. Like, I just felt like I had zero doubt that we had what it took to beat that team. And I have a lot of respect for Lindsay, and one of my closest friends is, is on that staff. And, and I love Chris Coclana so much. Um, and, um, like, I think they've had such an unbelievable turnaround season. And... Um, you know, but I just, I'm going to ride or die for mine. And, and, and I think we were the better team. And I think we had moments that they couldn't guard us and moments um, that we looked so, so fluid um, and so special and we competed. And, you know, I just, I just wanted, wanted this one for those kids, but I just, I wanted to coach another game. You know, I told them in the locker room that as much as I've coached in an, you know, a, a WNBA five-game semifinal series, and um, this is certainly the furthest that we've gone since I've been at Baylor. And so I, I told them I'll be better. Like I will, I will be better because we'll start to get used to. Um, you know, there was no doubt. I'm not, I'm not afraid to say I was really, really offended by the article that came out, and I didn't read any of it. I didn't read any of it. Don't know what happened, didn't read the article, but nothing's withering in Waco. Nothing is withering in Waco. Um, and we're going to do it our way, and it's going to be just as good. Um, but nothing is withering, and we are not, not a first-tier team. And you can't say we are. You can't get to the Sweet 16 and take a number one seed down to the wire um, in a one-possession game and say anything's withering in Waco. So... Um, you know, I, I, I think that the end of seasons are about honoring seniors and not spending a lot of time talking about next year. Um, I really do because I think that was three players potentially last game, and that's, that's who this is about. Um, but I'm excited to have this backcourt back. Um, and there's a lot blooming. I'm going to say not withering. There's, there's some stuff blooming in Waco. So... Um, if he wants to come do an article and come to Waco and write about it next year, he's welcome. Coach, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations on a good season. Thank you.